Welcome back everybody. Moving on with the dot product. We have to determine the dot product of A and B in both of these scenarios. Starting with the first scenario, vectors 2A minus 3B and A plus B are perpendicular and vectors A and B themselves are unit vectors. So notice 2A minus 3B, that's one vector, and then A plus B, that is another vector. And both of these vectors here in brackets are perpendicular to each other. Now, if two vectors are perpendicular to each other, what does that mean? Well, it means the dot product between them is zero. So we can say that 2a minus 3b dot a plus b is equal to zero. And then we can just expand all of this using uh, dot product rules. So we would take 2 times vector a dot vector a. So it's almost like we are foiling this out. Then uh, 2 vector a dot vector b. And then here minus 3b and a. So we got minus 3 times uh, b dot vector a, but that's the same as a dot vector b. So let's just write that where uh, it's the same as here. And then minus 3 times b, or uh, minus 3 times vector b time, uh, dot vector b is minus 3b dot vector b. And that has to equal 0. So then notice that these two here, are like terms. Also notice a dot vector a, that is just the magnitude of a squared. And then these two here, like terms 2 minus 3, that is just negative 1. So this is like negative a dot vector b minus 3. And then b dot vector b, that is just the magnitude of b squared. And that is going to equal 0. And now notice we can plug in the uh, magnitudes for a and b because we know that they are unit vectors. So we can say that 2 times 1 squared minus a dot vector b minus 3 times 1 squared is equal to 0. And then what we can do is we can bring this minus 1 a dot b over. So we'd have 2 minus 3 equals a dot b. And then 2 minus 3 is just negative 1. And so that there is your answer for the first scenario. A dot b is equal to negative 1. And then moving on to the second scenario, the dot product between these two vectors in brackets is equal to 100. And we know that vector a is uh, 3, negative 2, and 1. That's in component form and the magnitude of vector b is 2. So what we can do, like we did in the first scenario, let's write this out here. So we got uh, 3 times vector a minus 7 times vector b dot 4 times vector a plus 3 times vector b, and that has to equal 100. So what we can do, again, we can expand that left side. So 3 times 4, that is 12. We have a dot vector a. So that's this here. And then this here, 3 times 3 is 9. And then a dot vector b. Over here, minus 28. a dot vector b again. And then minus 7 times 3, that's minus 21, and that's going to be b dot vector b. And that has to equal 100. So then this here simplifies to 12 magnitude of a squared. And then we got 9 minus 28. 9 minus 28 is uh, minus 19. And that would be a dot b. And then we got minus 21 magnitude of b squared, and that's going to equal 
100. So now at this point, what do we do? Well, usually what we're doing is we're plugging in the magnitude for A, magnitude for B, and then we're just isolating for that A dot B. But notice that in this scenario, we're given the magnitude of B, so we could plug that in, but the magnitude of A we're going to have to find because we're given the vector in component form. So to find the magnitude of A, what we got to do, we got to take the square root of all of these components squared and then summed up. So this would be 3 squared plus negative 2 squared plus 1 squared. So this would be 9 plus 4, which is 13, plus 1, which is 14. So this would be the square root of 14. That is going to be the magnitude of A. So now we got the magnitude of B, got the magnitude of A. We could plug it into this equation. So this would be 12 times the magnitude of A squared. So this would be root 14 squared minus 19a dot b minus 21 the magnitude of b is given as 2 so this would be 2 squared and this is all going to equal 100. so now square root of 14 squared notice that that will cancel out the radical so we'll just have 12 times 14 here let's bring this over to make it positive, this uh, coefficient positive. And then here we'll have minus 21 times uh, 4. 2 squared is 4. And then bring the 100 over, that would be minus 100. So that's going to equal 19, positive 19, A dot B. And when you end up netting all of this out on the left side, you would get negative 16. And then you'd have 19 A dot B. So then isolating for that dot product, we get negative 16 over 19. So that there is the answer to the second scenario. The dot product of A dot B is negative 16 over 19.